author's book is also available um, on Audible or on other apps, and um, and they can be entertained by that too. Mm-hmm. You think the trends are going to t- continue, or is it going to peak? So. Or yes, <laughs> right, not peak, but <laughs> yeah, we're not peak. Well, it's still it is explosive growth. I think uh, the latest Q one of two thousand eighteen had a growth in audiobook sales of I think thirty two percent, but wow. it's still a small part of the book market. Mm-hmm. So we can't lose sight of the fact that it's that book sales dwarf audiobook sales but in terms of growth um so it has a it has a ways to go mm-hmm. i mean there is uh there's definitely a lot of growth i mean you know north american market is is by far the largest market but it's a big world that we live in and uh those other markets are going to expand as you know more people have cell phones in their pockets and mm-hmm. maybe want to listen to audiobooks first as a way of consuming their books um there so. is at least some trend toward audio first, to use mm-hmm. your term. The people that are, you know, would rather listen to an audio book or some books that are being created only in audio format, mm-hmm. right? Well, and certainly Audible is is putting out um, some originals uh, that they're marketing heavily. Um, and I should say Podium distributes our audio books on Audible, so that's where you will find them. Mm-hmm. Um if I don't know, how, are your listeners mainly indie writers, self-published writers? I don't. I don't know the answer to that, but I think they're all interested in writing. So go yeah, ahead. Um, I mean, there is a there's a sacrifice being made when you decide to go audio first, mm-hmm. and that sacrifice is book sales. And as I just said, you know, book sales are a larger market, so. If you're saying, okay, I'm going to create a story that I am going to then put into audio production, Mm -hmm. I'm saying I'm not going to sell it for like eight weeks in order that the audio book can be produced and put on the market. So that that dynamic of Mm -hmm. whether that makes sense to indie authors at this point, I'm not sure is entirely there, but maybe but maybe. I mean, maybe there's um, an opportunity for for that. And what you would hope, I would think, is that the audio book would then fuel subsequent sales in other formats, right? Correct. I mean, one would that would be the goal. <laughs> but it, but it's also it's interesting that also brings me to a point I want to make about audio books being different. Mm-hmm. And you, I think, in your talk on premise today, really. Um, brought to me the, this idea that an audiobook is creating a world. Right. And it's a big world. And it's a potentially a kind of different feeling world from the book. And so people who are readers have, are, often don't really like audiobooks because they've already created that world in their head and they don't necessarily need a narrator to do that. But people who love audiobooks, and certainly what we focus on at Podium is to make our audiobooks of the best quality. Right. And that is the first part is having a great narrator and the performer who will take the world of the book and the characters. And you talked about making characters mm-hmm. who are larger than life and perform them so that it takes the, the experience of the audiobook to a whole different plane. Mm-hmm. And I think that's, that's a different experience necessarily from reading the book. Right. Now, I've heard people say, and I bet you have too, that audiobooks, that's, that's not a real book, or, or right. listening to it isn't <laughs> the same as reading it. And yet I've seen more than one study that has suggested that, uh, far from that, that actually people who listen to uh, audiobooks are not getting an inferior experience mm-hmm. and in some some ways at least in some cases it leads to a, a, a more uh, emotional mm-hmm. and, and more immersive experience well and you think about how stories were told from the beginning of time around the campfire i mean having listening to an audiobook or a story being told to you through your headphones is a very intimate way of receiving mm-hmm. a story 
And certainly the narrators that we work with um, on our audio books are so talented at translating an author's work. I mean, there's no, it's not like them, they're inventing things. They're taking everything from the author's page, but they just, you know, they, they can captivate their audience of one or millions in some cases um, to, to this story and make it a different experience. And it's, it's funny. Some of the authors that we work with have said to me when they listen, they don't necessarily recognize it as their right. own work. <laughs> it has become something new and different, mm-hmm. but not necessarily better, not hopefully, definitely not worse. Um, but but just a different a different experience, and the, and one shouldn't. I don't think one should judge how people like to receive their right. I'm with stories. You. Yeah. No, I can totally see that. I've had that experience a couple times listening to audio adaptations of my mm-hmm. books. That you know, reading the manuscript again would be work, mm-hmm. but hearing someone perform it, well, that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Does that inform? Where you go with your characters, sort of in in future books, has have you had that sort of feedback from listening to the narrator? Have you had your characters say something that you think you want to hear the narrator perform? That's it. I'm not conscious of that, but who knows? My, in the early days, my big struggle was trying to because the, my series was set primarily in Oklahoma, trying to convince them that everyone in Oklahoma did not speak with some kind of hick accent, which <laughs> usually a deep South accent anyway, and that's uh. so wrong on numerous <laughs> counts. But anyway, your company worked with Andy Weir on his breakout book, The Martian, right? Correct. Can you talk about that? So that is our, it's part of our origin story at Podium. Um, I should say Podium was founded in 2012 by um, James Ton and Greg Lawrence. And they came to audio publishing from sort of different backgrounds, but very complementary um, as a pair. Greg was highly trained in audio production and so brought that experience and sensibility to the company. And James came from the sort of um, acquisitions, um, contract negotiation experience. And so I, I have sort of taken, fallen into his role um, on the acquisition side. And the 20th book that they published, that we published, <laughs> I should say, I wasn't there at the time, um, was The Martian. And Greg found it on Andy Weir's website. He was giving it away for free. I, I think this was the story. And he his fans were like, please put this on Amazon and sell it so we can put it on our Kindles. And he did that. Wasn't really expecting much from it. But Greg mm-hmm. found it, loved it. He loves sci-fi and epic fantasy, but he loved that particular story and wanted to put a great voice on it, who is the great R.C. Bray, who is a, did a tremendous performance um, of Mark Watney. I think is more Mark Watney than Matt Damon. Sorry. <laughs> For the film. <laughs> he is, yeah. It is a great audiobook. And, and it really, so it was our first fiction audiobook. And I think that set, it really set the tone for Podium. It showed what can be done, like what the potential is there for uh, a great audiobook. I mean, it has, it continues to sell extremely well. It's very popular on Audible, um, movie or no movie, people, people just love it. And so that, you know, that, but that's the philosophy that we bring to all of our audiobook productions. Mm -hmm. It's got to be a top flight narrator. It's going to be the right narrator because, you know, not every narrator is right for every story. Sure. So if it's an epic fantasy tale, you know, that involves Northern European-esque kind of language, then we might want someone particularly different for that. So we, we put a lot of thought into casting. And I think casting is is certainly something that um, we're known for. And it's we have a good reputation for that. Mm-hmm. And it does. It, it, it makes casting makes or breaks um, the audio book. So at this point, I think people listening to the podcast must be thinking, wow, how can I get into audiobooks? How can I get my books 
in that format or write for it or whatever? What what advice would you offer people? Well, I think focus on quality. Um, I think flinging up uh, an audiobook edition just because you feel like you need it to be there on your Amazon mm-hmm. sale page is not necessarily uh, a winning strategy. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd say authors who are tempted to perform their own fiction titles, mm-hmm. that is a, that is, I think, a third rail. Some authors are performers as well, and they know their own characters, and there may be a market for that. But from what we've seen, it's not, uh, that's not such a great idea. Probably the minority of it cases. Is the minority of cases. And, um, and the fact that you like reading stories doesn't mean that other people want to listen to it. Right, right, right. Other than maybe your grandchildren or your right. children on your knee <laughs> telling you stories. Yeah, it, it is. And, you know, listen to audiobooks. That's the other tip I would say. Listen to what makes a great audiobook. And a lot of authors are, are readers and mm-hmm. they're not big audiobook fans. And, right. and some of the authors that I talk to on a daily basis, I will ask them, I always start my conversations with them, is, are you an audiobook fan? Not because I'm judging them in any way. I just want to kind of know where they're at in terms of how much I need to tell them about the market, mm-hmm. um, but also how much how much they Oh, if they love a particular narrator or, but a lot mm-hmm. of them don't. And and that's totally fine. But it does mean if they were then to go about producing their own audio book, if they're not even a customer or a consumer of mm-hmm. that medium, then you're really starting from less than zero. Um, I, I've heard people say to an author before, oh, you have a great voice. You should record your books. But there's more to it than that, right? Um, there is a little more to it than that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's there's not just the the performance of the characters, but there's also having quality control mm-hmm. and making sure that the way you said a name in chapter one continues to be the same way that you say it in chapter twenty five. And we have right. proofers and editors, and we go back and get corrections made. So, and and listeners will catch those mistakes mm-hmm. just as they catch typos in uh, ebooks and authors appreciate that because those fans are heavily invested audiobook fans will will catch mistakes mm-hmm. and and they've paid a lot for this product and it's um, it needs to be of the highest possible quality do you have a sense, maybe a, a short list in your mind, what makes a really good audiobook? Um, oh, I don't know. I think it's the same as what makes mm-hmm. a great book. Character, right. really great character that you can, you know, fall in love with or hate. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, good. <laughs> a great plot. You know, it, it really, I think it's the same. It is those same elements as as a great book, but the performance there, it's almost easier for me to say what I don't like in an audiobook. <laughs> okay, issue. let's hear that. And, that's, and that can come down to performance, really. I yeah. think a narrator makes a great audiobook uh, in how they are, how they translate the character with their voice. Um, and some some narrators have a very low key, low key way of doing it. They're not, you know, putting on on a lot of voices for the characters, but it, and it's still transporting and sort of their choice, their artistic choice in, in how they do that. It's, it's almost like an intangible mm-hmm. thing in what, uh, what I have loved about audiobooks, right. but I still like to read as well. Right. Of course. <laughs> Victoria, thanks for being on the podcast. Thanks for having me. Thanks again to Victoria for giving us the skivvy on audiobooks. I don't know if I've mentioned this or not, but I've got a new book out now called The Last Chance Lawyer. And if you would please help me spread the word about that book to your friends and person or in social media, I would really appreciate it. Or post a review. Notice I am not offering you a gift card. I'm just saying if you liked it and you want to post a review, I would really appreciate it. You can find that book everywhere online and any place good books are sold. For that matter, if you're liking this podcast, please spread the word about that. 
I've been to two different writers groups the past two weekends, and both times I had people reach out to me and tell me they were enjoying the podcast. 